Right, here we're Gary Smith from the Derbyshire County Cricket Club. As the season is getting closer, uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on some of your wicket keeping advice, which might be useful uh, for youngsters out there. Um, first question During the winter months, uh, what areas of wicket keeping skills would you focus on and why? <clears throat> I think the winter is quite important in terms of. Um, I think it's a time when you can do a bit of technical work. I think once the season starts, you don't want to be getting overly technical. So I think the first thing I'd do is look back on the season that's ended, um, identify if there's a few um, areas that I, I might have struggled with, uh, uh, areas that you know might just need a little bit of focus in the winter. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like to, I don't like to. I think there's a lot of coaches who like setting up fancy drills. You know, you'll have an indoor centre full of cones and um, really that there is good for coaches, but players, you know, yeah, I think it, I think it satisfies a coach's ego, but not necessarily um, relative to what a player needs. So I think catching a lot of balls is really important. Um, if you think about batsmen and bowlers, they want to do in their preparation exactly what they're going to do under the middle. So for batsmen, they want to hit a lot of balls. For bowlers, they want to bowl a lot of balls. They want to groove the action. And keeping's... You know, it's exactly the same. You want to catch a lot of balls, you want to feel the ball, um, going into the gloves in the right way, um, you want to feel your body moving, getting into line. You know, and sometimes, yes, you can use a few technical drills to do that, but more often than not, it's just volume of catching a lot of balls. So 10, 15 yards away from the bat, recreating the ball, coming through past the wickets, getting the body moving, getting your head into line, um, and just catching a lot of volume of balls. If there's something specifically technical that I feel like I need to just top up on, then you might get a few cones out and do a few drills with the coach um, and top up on those things and just try and you know, get on top of a couple issues. But generally for me throughout the winter, um, firstly there'd be a break um, and get away from keeping because mentally it is, you know, it is a tough job throughout the, the summer six months. Get away from it for a few months and then I'd say for the latter half of the winter as you're building up to the season is just start upping that volume, that workload. Um, and uh, I think a big thing for keepers which is often neglected is the gym work throughout the winter. You know, I think uh, keeping throughout the season takes it out on your body, your legs, um, your back, particularly as a tall keeper for me. So making sure that you're focusing on that gym work, getting that core strength right. Um, so that when the season comes, as we know, it's very busy. There's not a lot of time to um, top up in the gym. So to make sure that that base is set by the time the season starts, um, yeah, then you're, you're good to go. Okay. And following on from that, from the winter months, then are there any particular drills that you tend to focus on during the lead up to the start of the season? Yeah, again, um, volume, catching a lot of balls, and ideally catching them from bowlers. You know, as coaches, yes, we can. Um, stand with the bat and we can do tennis ball work and we can hit a lot of volume of balls but it's not the same in terms of a keeper's um, setup and movement you know as the bowlers running through so as we know bowlers obviously start raising their workloads as they get closer to the season if facilities allow it and you can keep to the seamers whether it's indoors or on a side strip outdoors um, is to really just groove your movements um, you know as you're coming up with the bowlers moving your feet getting into line getting your head into line um, doing a lot of work in that regard, and then of course slip catches. You know, I think slip catches are massively important. Um, you know, a coach can stand and hit ball straight to you, but that deviation off the edge, which is obviously the chance that you want to make sure you're snapping up in the game, is there's only one way that you can recreate that, and that is with a slip cord and with a coach who's, you know, who's nicking it off the face of the bat. And um, yeah, those two things for me are massive. As we get really close, I guess as we are now with, you know, the first game of the season tomorrow. That really is the workload you want to be doing, catching to the bowlers and a lot of nicks off the side of the bat. Um, Will keepers these days have to, to bat and keep? Uh, how do you decide how much time to spend on, on each discipline? I think it's, it's very dependent on the individual. So I think we, we all know it's very difficult to get the all-round perfect player who's a great batsman and a great keeper. I think um, if any keeper looks at themselves honestly, there's going to be one area where they're slightly weaker, whether it's, you know, whether they're a batsman who keeps or whether they're a keeper who's had to develop into a batsman. Um, so I think being honest and identifying that, you know, if you're a slightly better batsman than what you are a keeper, then, you know, you're probably looking at 40% in your batting and 60% in your keeping. However, I think that's in the ideal world. 
think we know this isn't an ideal world and um, of course coaches want as much as they can from their keepers with the bat. So you find the tendency that keepers are neglecting their keeping because we know if you have two keepers lined up next to each other, whichever is the better batsman generally is going to play in the team. You know, so supply and demand, your batsmen, your keepers will be working more on their batting than what they are on their keeping. So it's a difficult one and I think as a purist, as a, as a keeper myself, if I had a keeper in the team I'd always be encouraging him to make sure that he's working on his keeping and not neglecting that. However, I think we do know that you know, batsmen do, well keepers do work more on their batting than anything else. But again, it does come down to the individual. You know, if you have a keeper who's just highly talented and it comes naturally with the gloves, you know, you can afford to maybe do 20% keeping and you know 80% focus on his batting to get his batting up to the same level of his of his keeping. But I guess that's the job as a as a coach and a man manager to identify that. And you know, every individual's different. If a wicket keeper is struggling with confidence due to a few mistakes, either the drops or uh, missed stumpings, uh, what would your advice be? I think first it would be to embrace those mistakes. You know, I don't think any player in the team goes up there and makes mistakes on purpose. You know, so that is part of the game. And every player in the team does make mistakes, whether it's a batsman. You know, all batsmen get out eventually. Bowlers bowl bad balls and goes for, goes for four. However, keepers are always under the spotlight, and it's a thankless job. You know, it really is. No one pats you on the back when you catch a ball cleanly, but as soon as you fumble one or miss a half chance, you know, everyone's telling you and making sure you you don't forget it. So embrace it and understand that it is part of the job. Um, but confidence, you know, plays a massive role in keeping. Um, and if we break it down and we go back to preparation, um, you know, and particularly if we're talking younger age group keepers, um, a lot of tennis ball work can help when it comes to confidence. Sometimes it can be intimidating with, with hard cricket balls. So um, working with tennis balls is twofold. Um, obviously you can work at a higher intensity without that fear of injury from a tennis ball, but it also encourages soft hands. You know, tennis balls are very bouncy going into the gloves, so you can't have hard hands because they will just bounce out. So it's good to encourage soft hands in terms of your glove work, but you can work at that higher intensity. So um, that builds confidence. You know, when you then transition into standing up to the stumps, to seamers, um, your movement's better, your confidence is better. But yeah, I think a lot of it is just making sure that you're aware that you, you are going to make mistakes in any profession, um, but particularly keeping is an art, and it is a tough art, and you're going to have bad days, and a lot of the times your your day is not necessarily determined by you. If you have bowlers who are spraying it around all day, you know, it makes it tough. If you have conditions that are swinging late and wobbling once the ball passes the stumps, it makes your job tough. So you yourself might actually be feeling good, but the conditions the way the bowlers are bowling actually determine how difficult your day becomes. But at the end of the day, if you're passionate about keeping, I think that's what keeps you coming back after a bad day. You know, if you're forced to be behind the stunts and you hate it and you get a couple on the fingers and you're doing, you're not going to be coming back again the next day to do it. So making sure you have the right man behind the stumps and he's passionate about wicket keeping um, generally is half the job done. And a common concern with your wicket keepers uh, is knowing the best place to stand. Uh, what advice would you have, what would your advice be, Yeah, I think that's also, it, it's, it's pretty much linked with, with confidence. You know, I think if you have a, a young keeper who's slightly intimidated and lacking confidence, you'll find that he'll, he'll tend to stay a little bit you know, deeper. <laughs> However, I think the downside of that is that if the ball's bouncing before it gets to you, you know, and you're picking it up on the half volley, yes, it might not be hitting you at the same pace, but the chance of catching it cleanly um, is minimal. It's going to be hitting you on the ends of the fingers, probably going past you, which is going to dent your confidence even more. I mean, ideally, you want to be catching it at hip height. You know, I mean, generally where your hands are, are around your hips, that's where they move freely. It's a comfortable height. Um, but as you get slightly older, you've also got to remember you're going to have more of a slip cordon with you. And those, those slippers are determined by where you set up as a keeper. So if you stand too deep, edges from the bowlers are not going to be carried to the slip cordon. Um, you know, half chances are not going to be half chances because they're not even going to be getting close to you. Um, and it's a bit like fielders backing up a shy at the stumps. You know, again, they're a little bit hesitant and they tend to hang further back and it bounces twice before it gets to them and it makes it harder. You know, yes, it might be a little bit more on the hands, but if you attack the stump and, and, and get within a few meters of it, it ends up hitting you on the full, maybe at more pace, but it's more of a comfortable take. So 
Again, it can be an individual thing. I think some keepers might like it, you know, more around sort of knee height, um, particularly your shorter keepers. And sometimes it can be a little bit easier for them. Personally, for me as a taller keeper, I try and get as close to the stumps as I can, so that it's hitting me at a comfortable height, because, you know, as a tall keeper, it's a long way down, down to the floor. But you can always have your slippers in your ears, you don't have gloves on, you know, just asking you to stay back a little bit further. But at the end of the day, I know that Bolo would rather have a half chance dropped because it's come quickly than have that half chance not carried because you're standing too deep. Right. Aaron, thank you very much for your time and all your advice for all the keeping and good luck for the season. Cheers, absolute pleasure.